A young man and woman in custody tonight as human remains discovered in northern Macomb County are identified as a missing teenager. 19-year-old Stephen McAfee of Macomb Township vanished in March of last year. His remains were discovered yesterday behind a home in Ray Township. Investigators say he was killed on a vacant plot of land. This is at 34 Mile Road in Bruce Township before his killer moved his body. Sean Lay has been following every development in this case. And Sean, what do we know right now about the two people in custody? Well, we know information. I can show you some things, some home videos that show these two that were in court today actually being carefree teens. But now one is charged in a horrible murder. His girlfriend at the time charged with helping dismember the body. Let's address the issue of bond. Looking at the seriousness of this, uh, I'm understanding, Mr. Barnwell, exactly what you're saying. What I'll do here is I'm going to set bond at, uh, I'm going to set it at $20,000. I'm going to make that a cash surety bond. I'm very concerned about this. Uh, of course, there's to be no charges of any kind. Absolutely no contact with Mr. Fiaco. I want a GPS tether. anything else to come before the court at this point? No, I thank you for, I, I believe that's a fair decision. I thank you for your consideration for the defense arguments. As you, you indicated no contact with Mr. Fiaco, could I ask you to also include the no contact with the victim's family? Yes, absolutely. And one Ms. more thing. Donald, oh, do you understand everything that we've done here with regard to the bond? Clearly, no contact whatsoever. Mr. Fiaco, absolutely no contact with the uh, family of the uh, deceased. Now, if I, I may just address my client, every call you make is recorded. Do not say anything on these phones recorded. You're presumed innocent. Do not discuss this case on the phone with anybody in the jail. Yes, Nothing but the truth, so if you got it. Have a seat, you're under oath. Please state and spell your name, please. Uh, Yvette McDonald, E-E-V-E-T-T-E-M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. -E 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 Thank you. Any question? Yes. How old are you currently? I am 20 years old. In 2016, March 10th of 2016, how old were you? I was 17 then. Are you currently working or in school? Uh, both. All right. Where are you working? I work at Ike's Restaurant. Okay. What's, what school are you attending? Macomb Community College. I want to, let's get right to um, this case. When did you initially meet Andrew Fiano? I met him in February of 2014. How old were you then? I was 15 years old. Where did you meet him? Uh, Romeo High School. When did you start dating him? Um, the following month, March of 2014. Yes, please. You're right, I believe the uh, Mr. General indicate that he's willing to stipulate to the identification of Andrew Fiaco. So no. here in court. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. All right. Um, did you eventually move in with Andrew? Approximately when was that? Uh, January of 2016. And how old were you when you moved in? Um, it was right before I turned 17. What grade were you in? Um, I was doing online school at that time. Um, it would have been 10th or 11th grade. Have you met a young man by the name of Stephen McAfee? I have. 
How many times have you met Stephen? Um, m five or ten. Five or ten times. How did, who did you meet him through? Andrew Fiacco. Moving to April 27th of 2017, were you arrested on that day? I was. Where were you brought? I was brought to the police station in Macomb. Were you interviewed? I was. And who were you interviewed by? Detective Shell and Detective Morfino. Approximately how long did that interview go for? Um, I'd say about two hours. Did you speak to them about the uh, uh, about any threats made by Andrew to you? I did. Okay. What type of threats? Um, death threats, physical threats. Did you talk to them about your relationship with Andrew? I did. Just in terms of general topic areas right now. Did you talk to them about what happened the night of March 10th of 2016? I did. Did you make any statements in that initial interview about Andrew being jealous towards Stephen? I did. Did you tell the police in that initial interview about the information you had about why Andrew murdered Stephen? I did. Did you tell the police about the revelation of how it came about that Andrew told you that he murdered Stephen? I did. Did you tell the police about the location of where the body was? Yes, I did. And about visiting the scene? I did. Did you tell the police in that initial interview about how you were taken there? Yes. And how were you taken there? Um, he, Andrew Fiacco drove there, drove us both there, and he had a gun in his hand and forced me to walk in with him. Did you describe during that initial interview with the police the location of Stephen's body? I did. What else did you say about Stephen's body? Um, that it was in two different locations. Did you indicate a timeline during that initial interview? I did. Did you indicate whether you voluntarily helped or were forced to help move Stephen's body? I did tell them I was forced to, yes. And we'll get into the details more. I just want to handle topic, subject matters. Did you indicate at all to the police any statements Andrew made about the murder? I did. What did you tell him? I told them that he told me where he did it, how he did it. Did you also indicate to the officers the number of shots Andrew said he fired? I did. How many was that? Uh, three. Did you tell them the number of times that you went to visit the body? I did. Did you make any statements about Nancy's grave? I did. Did you give details about moving the body? I did. Did you tell the police in that initial interview about where the duffel bag was placed? I did. And how it was loaded? Yes. And how it was transported? Yes. Did you discuss with the police the disposition of the duffel bag? Yes. And what was that? Um, what exactly do you mean? I'm sorry. Disposition means what happened to the duffel bag? Um, I told them that it was burned. Did you tell police during that initial interview about burying the body? I did. Did Detective Morfino, Morfino question you at that time about Stephen McAfee's missing person? He did. What did you tell Sergeant Morfino? I told him that I didn't know anything. Was that the truth? No, it was not. Why did you lie to him? I was scared. You're, you're at the police station, right? Yes. Are you surrounded by police? Yes. Sergeant Morfino is there? Yes. Did you feel safe? No. Why not? I was afraid if I told them the truth that they wouldn't be able to react fast enough. They wouldn't be able to help me or help my family. When you say you didn't think they would be able to help you or help your family, what do you mean? Keep them safe. Keep us all safe. Who were you afraid of? Andrew. Why were you afraid of Andrew? He showed me a dead body. I, I, I knew he was capable of doing something like that. He told me he was involved in other matters as well. What did he tell you were the other matters? Uh, that he was a part of a mafia. Did he tell you what he did for the mafia? He did. What did he tell you? He told me he was a tech guy. Tech guy meaning technical? 
technical guy, yeah, take, took care of all the technical things, computers, surveillance cameras, things like that. Did he also tell you about being a hitman? He did. What did he tell you? He told me that he killed the bad people for and with the mafia. Did he ever talk about whether or not you were protected? He did. What did he tell you? He said as, as long as I was with him that I was protected under a contract. What did he call that? A protection tract. Was it just more than you that was under the protection, according it, to Andrew? It was me and my family. Were statements made about what would happen if you left him? Yes. What were those statements? We would all be killed. Who was we? Me and my family. In relation to Stephen McAfee, had you and Andrew ever had any fights over Stephen? Yes, we did. Over what? Um, he accused me of sleeping with Stephen. How often did he accuse you of that? Quite often. It was always an argument. Did it ever go past the argument stage? It did. When was that? Um, Andrew took me to Stephen's house. He took you to Stephen's house? He drove us there, yes. Okay. And what vehicle did he drive in? The Fusion. What were your emotions on the way? I was confused. I didn't know exactly where we were going. Had you ever been to Stephen's house prior to that? No. Had you ever been to Stephen's house after that? No. Is that the first time you were ever at Stephen's house? Yes. Tell the jury what happened when you went there. Um, we we pulled up in the front of the house on the street. Andrew went and knocked on the door. Um, I don't remember who answered. It was a just, member. Just all you can say is what Andrew was saying. What was Andrew saying? He was asking the family member if they recognized me, insisting that I had been there before, asking if they had ever seen me at the house before. Where were you while he was asking those questions? I was a couple feet behind him. After those questions were asked, did Stephen come down? No. Did Stephen come outside? No. Did you exit the porch? I did. Okay. Did you and Andrew leave the porch? No. Well, yes. Yes, we did. Sorry. Okay. And what happened after you left the porch? Uh, he threw my purse at me and drove away. Did you have to walk home then? or? I walked for a couple of minutes, but he turned around and came back and picked me up. Let's go to the night of March 10th of 2016. Were you living with Andrew? I was. Would that be on the address, at the house on the address in Constant? Yes. Will you tell the jury what happened between you and Andrew earlier in the evening? Um, we had gotten into an argument about a couple of things. Um, one was about Stephen. I was again being accused of sleeping with him. Um, another was the fact that I was leaving to go to Florida to visit a friend. And who is this friend? Cecilia. As a result of the argument, what did you do? I went to sleep. About what time? Eight or nine o'clock at night. Do you know where Andrew was when you went to sleep? Um, I believe he was next to me when I went to sleep. Did there come a point in time that um, I guess later in the evening that you woke up? Uh, yes, I did. Do you know approximately what time that was? Um, maybe around two or three. What did you do? I woke up and I seen that Andrew wasn't next to me, so I went to the basement to see if he was there. He was not. I checked the garage and his car was gone, so I went back to bed. What time did you wake up the next morning? Eight or nine in the morning. Where was Andrew? Uh, he was at the house. Okay. Was he in your room or just at the house? Um, I believe he was in the room, yes. Did you ask him at all anything about having been gone the night before? I did. And what did he say? He said that he went and picked up Stephen and they hung out at a gas station for a couple minutes and then he dropped him back off and came home.
Did you think anything more of it at the time? No, I did not. Now, when you talk to the police, when you talk to Sergeant Morfino on April 27th, did you talk about the argument that evening? Um, I don't believe so. Did you tell them that you and, and Andrew had been arguing I did. in Florida? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you tell them about the um, what you testified to here, and that was, uh, you said there were two issues that you were arguing about, the other one was Stephen. Did you tell them that night? I believe I did, yes. If I showed you your transcript and it wasn't in there, would you believe that? Yes. Okay. Was there a reason that you didn't tell them that that night? There was a lot going on. I had just been arrested. I was telling them about Stephen when I had been holding it in. I was under a lot of stress. I just probably didn't remember. Does that mean it didn't happen? No, it doesn't. When was it that you learned that Stephen was missing? Um, when I came back from Florida, so maybe a week or two later, after the 10th. Was Andrew still mad that you went to Florida? Yes, he was. Did anything unusual happen? Uh, I mean, did you, I guess, let me, let me go back to this. When did you learn that Stephen was missing? Um, when I came back to Michigan from visiting Florida. Was anything unusual happening between you and Andrew during that time? When I was in Florida? No, when you came back. Um, not really unusual. He was frustrated and angry. Did you ever ask him about Stephen? I did. Okay. What would you say to him about Stephen? I asked him if he knew anything because Stephen had went missing the same night that Andrew had seen him. I asked him if he had known like where he went or who he was with. I guess how often did you ask Andrew about Stephen? Um, I asked a handful of times. I couldn't ask too often because I would get accused of caring too much about it. Did there come a point in time where he changed his answer? He did. Did he ever ask you how you felt about it? He did. What did he ask you and what did you say? He asked me how I would feel if Stephen was gone, if he was dead. And I said I would feel sorry, I would feel bad, it would be a sad thing. Did he finally give you a different response when you asked him again about Stephen being missing? He did. And what did he tell you? He told me that he killed him. In the whole time that you were living with him, in this time from March, April, approximately when was this revelation? Um, I would say maybe a month after March, approximately. Did he ever mention that he killed him in self-defense? No, he did not. Why did he tell you that he killed Stephen? Because he seen some, Stephen had seen something on Andrew's phone that he wasn't supposed to, relating to the Mafia. Did you initially believe him? No, I didn't. I guess what were your emotions when he told you that? I was confused and a little scared. Did you go to the scene? I did. Who did you go with? Andrew. Will you discuss, tell the jury how it was that you went to that scene? Um, it was around morning time. Andrew had came into the bedroom that we were both sharing and he said that we were going to go for a drive. Um, we got into the car and he showed me that he had his brother's gun. So he just kept driving. He I didn't ask any questions. I was worried about what was going to happen if I did. Um, we arrived at the scene. We pulled up on the side of the road on 34 okay, miles. Hold, hold on just a second. Hold on okay. just a second. Now, you've been dating Stephen for approximately 
26 months at that time from February 14th to 14th and this is now middle of uh, April 2016 so that's approximately 26 months approximately yes and Andrew ever pulled a gun a gun out before to go with you anywhere no and Andrew ever carried a gun with you anywhere no is this the first time Andrew had ever carried a gun with him when the two of you left the house yes how is that making you feel I was terrified how are you feeling as you're going to this location? I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. Was Andrew able to find this location immediately? No. Would you describe to the jury, uh, I guess, what route he took and, and how you finally arrived at the location? Um, we took the expressway up to past 32 Mile. Um, we had driven up, I think it's Old Van Dyke, all the way up to 36 or 37 and back down a couple of times. He couldn't quite remember where it was. Did you eventually, I guess, come to a location? Yes. Would you describe to the jury what happened when you got to that location? I was told to get out and we started walking into a wooded area. Now, who's in front and who's in back? I'm in front, Andrew's in the back of me. Where is the gun? In his hand. Do you see it? Yes. What does Andrew tell you? He tells me not to look behind me. I can't walk next to him and I can't walk behind him. I need to keep walking forward and not look back. Now the jury has seen this location. Is this day or night? It's daylight. How are you feeling? I was scared. Do you know approximately how long you walk? Um, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Do you see something? I do. What do you see? A shoe. Again? I've seen a shoe. Okay. After you saw the shoe, what did you see? Um, he said that's where it is. Andrew was talking about the body, so he told me to walk towards it. And as we got closer, I seen a body on the ground. Was the body face up or face down? Um, lying on the back, so face up. Can you describe, I guess, the condition of the body? I couldn't look at the face. Um, I looked at the hand because he kept telling me I needed to look at it, but the hand was black, almost pruned. Was the jaw intact? No, it was not. Where was the... Did you see something, I guess, near the body? Yes, I did. The jaw was a couple feet away from the body. The, the lower jaw? Yes. Where is the gun at this point? Still in his hand. And you did tell this to the police that he walked you in with a gun that I first did. time? I did, yes. What were you afraid was going to happen? I thought he was going to shoot me. Did you see anybody else out there? No. Could you hear any cars? No. Did you hear any voices? No. What did Andrew do that first time that he was showing it to you? What did he say to you? He told me that I needed to look. He needed, everybody needed to see what death looked like. Everybody needed to see what a dead body looked like. And you told that to the police? I did. Do you know if Stephen was wearing a watch at that time? Um, I believe he was, yes. I didn't see it at the first time. Okay. What about headphones? Uh, yes. Did you say it the first time or a subsequent time? Uh, I believe it was the first time I seen the headphones. Do you know where the headphones were? Uh, hanging out of his pocket. How long do you think you were back there? Maybe five minutes. Other than looking at the body, did either of you or Andrew do anything to the body? No. Or touch the body? No. Or move anything at that time? No.
describe, I guess, to the jury than how you walk out? The same as when we came in, I had to walk in front. What emotions are you feeling on the way out? I was terrified. I was scared. I didn't think that Andrew was capable of doing something like that. Is that one of the reasons why you didn't go to the police? Yes. Do you go back to visit the body a second time? Yes. When is that? About how long after this first time do you go back to the body? Um, maybe a month afterwards. Did you go there voluntarily the first time? No. Did you go there voluntarily the second time? No. Why did you go back the second time? I was scared. I was told the Mafia is still, I still have to help because of the Mafia. So this wasn't something you wanted to do? No. Did you volunteer to go back? No. When you go back the second time, approximately one month later, what vehicle do you go in? The white Ford Fusion. Does Andrew bring anything with him this time? Yes. What does he bring? A duffel bag and an axe. <coughs> Can you describe the axe? Um, a long brown handle. The top of the axe had a, a pick at the end of it. Does he have anything else with him? The gun. Same gun? Same gun. Describe your emotions to the jury now as you're going back with those items in Andrew's possession. I'm still scared. I'm terrified. I, I'm mad because he's making me do this. What's the first thing that happens when you arrive then back to that same location where Stephen is laying? Um... I believe the first thing was that Andrew took his watch. When you get out there, have you figured out how you're going to do this and what you're going to do? He had told me yes. Okay, what did he tell you was going to happen? He told me that not the whole body would fit in the duffel bag, so we had to take half of it. When you get out there, who carries a duffel bag into the back? Uh, he does. When you get back, who, who's carrying the axe into the back? Uh, the axe is in the duffel bag. Okay. When you get back there, what's the after the watch is removed? What's the first thing that happens? Um, he tells me that I need to do it. I need to do the. I need to cut it. What do you do? I say no. What happens when you say no? He wouldn't accept that. What do you mean he wouldn't accept it? What, did he, what does he do that says he shows you he won't accept it? He tells me that because I've seen it and because the Mafia knows that I've seen it that I have to help. Do you take possession of the axe? I do. Do you swing the axe? I do. Do you make contact with Stephen's body? No. How many times do you swing that axe? One time. After you swing that axe one time, what do you say to Andrew? He was getting frustrated, he was getting nervous and scared, so he took it and he just started to do it. So you didn't volunteer to swing the axe? No, I did not. And you didn't make any contact with the body with that axe? No, I did not. Do you know approximately how many times Andrew swung the axe? Um, more than five, less than ten. Do you know where he was swinging it originally? Uh, his. Steven's torso. Okay. If you could stand up and show the jury on yourself approximately where? Um, it was about right here. Okay. Right above the waist? Yes. Okay, 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 thank you.
once that body was then chopped up, or at least, it, I guess, describe for the jury, he, you indicated he took a number of swings at that area. What are you doing during the time that he's doing this? Um, I was crying. I had walked away a couple of times because I threw up. Approximately how many, how long does it take for, uh, the, with Andrew swinging the axe, for there to be uh, enough separation for you to move the body? Only a couple minutes. Exactly how do you move the body? Um, he told me to grab the pant legs and he used the end of the pickaxe to loop it through the belt loop. So you grab what would be a technique Stephen's feet? Yes. Was he wearing tennis shoes at the time? Um, yes, I believe so. You didn't grab them by the shoes, you grabbed it by what? Uh, the, the end of the pants. Did you have gloves? Yes. And who provided you with the gloves? Andrew did. Did Andrew have gloves? Yes, he did. So you're physically grabbing the pant legs at the bottom, and you indicated that he, Andrew, had taken the axe with the point? Yes. And he picked up what part of the body? Uh, the belt loop. Where is the duffel bag at this point? Um, right next to the body. How, I guess, do you, does the portion that was removed fit into the duffel bag? Um, yes. And how is it that you're, I mean, are you, does it slide right in? Does anybody have to tuck it in? How does it happen? Um, we just set it in and then kind of moved the bag around it so it would cover. Did you have anything to do that day with the skull? No. Did you chop off the head? No. Did you see Andrew chop off the head? No. Did you see the skull in the duffel bag? I seen teeth, yes. You saw teeth? Yes. Did you see any other loose bones or anything else? I think there was a couple of loose bones that were thrown into the bag. By who? Andrew. Approximately how long does this take? Maybe a half hour, 45 minutes. Do you feel anybody back there? No. Do you hear any voices? No. Do you hear any cars or anything like that? No. From being in there where you were, can you see any houses? No. Can you see that neighborhood that seems to be off to the north? No. Once the lower torso has been placed in the bag, what do you and Andrew do? He couldn't pick it up by himself, so he told me to take a handle of the duffel bag, and we walked it to the, to the road. What car did you place it in? The Fusion. Now, did you... So you, uh, we showed you your car. Now at the time, if, if he showed you approximately one month after March 10th and then approximately a month or so later you go back, to this, well, approximately two months later now, is that correct? From yeah. March 10th? Is this the time that your car is in Andrew's driveway? Yes. And I think you testified earlier it's without a plate? Correct. When you drive the, uh, who drives home from this location at 34 in Van Dyke? He does. Andrew does. Where do you go? Back to his house. What do you do with the duffel bag? Um, he put it in the trunk of my car. Why was it placed in your car? Because I didn't have a license or a license plate. It wasn't drivable. So since we used his car to get around, it had to go in my car. Did you go back to the body a third time? I went to the location, yes. Okay, would you describe, I guess, what you meant by you went to the location? 
Um, we he had driven us back out there, um, but I didn't go in the third time. Where did you stay? In the car. Did Andrew have the gun this time also? Uh, yes. Who went into that back area? Andrew did. Approximately how long was Andrew gone? 15, 20 minutes. Do you know how the white earbuds got back to Andrew's house? Um, I believe he put them in the duffel bag when we were there the second time. Did you participate in burying any parts of Stephen's body on, I guess, Andrew's backyard? I did, yes. Were there some accommodations made prior to that? What do you mean? Did you go out and get anything? Um, yes. Okay. Who went and where, where did you go and what did you buy? Um, we went to Home Depot and we bought a bucket, a, a, a gallon bucket. Um, and some uh, quick cement. One of those orange buckets that Home Depot sells? Yeah. Okay. And some uh, cement also? Yes. Who paid for it? I did. How long after that, I guess, did the body get buried? Um, a couple weeks. It wasn't that long after. Was there a reason that you wanted Stephen's body out of your car? Yes. Why? Because Andrew was trying to kick me out of the house, and I couldn't leave with Stephen in my trunk. So what did you tell him? I told him that he needed to take care of what he had done. And you think that body was in your car for approximately how long? Um, over a month, maybe two. What part did you help bury? The legs. Was anybody else home when this process started? No. Did you voluntarily do it? No. Would you describe to the jury how it was that you came about having to help? Andrew again said that I had to help because of the mafia. I had to keep up my protection co protection contract because I knew about Steve and I had to help finish it. Do you know what day of the week this was? Um, I don't know what specific day, but it was during the week because everyone was at work. Do you know approximately what time? Midday. Maybe uh, noon or one. Okay. Tell the jury then how it started that uh, the body was going to be buried. Um, he had grabbed, Andrew had grabbed two shovels and he told me I needed to go help. He picked the spot by the tree line because he said no one would find it pretty much. Um, so we started digging. I went inside because I just, I couldn't do it. Um, How did the body get transported back to the edge of the field, back to the property? Um, a, a children's wagon. We put up people's exhibit number 53. Did you help? I mean, who, I guess, wheeled that wagon to the back? Andrew did. Where were the shovels at that time? Still in the shed. He hadn't told me to, or he hadn't grabbed them yet. Who grabbed the shovels? Um, I believe we both were in there and grabbed one. Now we have uh, People's Exhibit number 50. Is, take a look at that. Is that then the location where the body was buried? Yes. Now, we see when this photograph was taken after the police arrived that uh, there's a mound off to the right and then there's a hole there. Was that like that when you began? What do you mean? Okay. In looking at this exhibit, we see that there's a mound here to the right and then we see that what looks to be like a hole was it like that when you went back there? No. Okay, what was it like when you went back there? It was just flat ground. Did you help dig that hole? For a minute or two, yes. Approximately how much of it, I guess, did you help dig? If 
five shovelfuls of dirt. What are you doing during that time? I was upset. I was crying still. Approximately how long did it take to get the hole dug? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe a half hour to an hour. When the hole has been uh, dug, how does the body get into the hole? Um, he grabbed me. Andrew grabbed me from inside and told me that I had to come help put it in the hole because he couldn't do it himself. So you had left there? Yes. Okay, and where did you go? Inside the house. And approximately how long after you left and went into the house was it before Andrew came into the house to ask you to help? About a half hour, 45 minutes. What help did you give him in placing the body then in that hole? Um, I grabbed an end of the duffel bag and he grabbed the other and we pretty much just rolled it over. The uh, body came out at that point? Yes. Was there anything left inside the duffel bag? Um, not that I know of, no. What did... Um, did you remain there then while the cement was being made? Um, I don't remember. I think I was there, yes. Okay. Did you help make the cement? No. Did you help bring the cement back there? No. Did you pour any of the cement? No. Did you place any of the dirt on top of the cement after the cement had been placed in the hole? Again, a couple shovels full, but then I stopped. And we now know from the testimony in this case that the um, there was a skull buried behind the carriage house. Did you participate in that? No. Did you dig that hole? No. Did you even know there was a skull? No. Do you know when that was done? No. When you rolled that body out into the hole from the duffel bag, was there a skull in that duffel bag? No. So essentially the one with the carriage house, you didn't have any, you didn't make any effort toward it? No. Did you even know about it? No. What happens to the duffel bag? Um, Andrew started a fire and he told me to throw it in, so it got burnt. Where was the fire started? In the fire pit in his backyard. Do you know how the fire was started? Um, lighter fluid. People versus Yvette McDonald. Good morning, Your Honor. Josh West appearing on behalf of Ms. McDonald. My bar number is 60694. Good morning, Your Honor. Joshua Van Lund for the people. I'm asking the court to uh, accept the plea. Okay. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, self you got. I do. State your name. Chief Matt McDonald. Okay, do you agree? I do. Okay. Judge, my client's actions were criminal. They were wrong. They are the worst of the worst. However, um, after this, she did the right thing. Um, she agreed and entered into an agreement with the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office to testify against Mr. Fiacco. Um, there wasn't a lot of promises, so she entered into that agreement without any certainty as to what her sentence was going to be. Um, in speaking with Mr. Cataldo after the trial ended, uh, his exact words were she went above and beyond the call of duty in testifying and helping convict uh, Andrew Fiacco, who murdered uh, Mr. McVeigh. Um, I'm asking for consideration from the court that the court adopt the recommendation of the probation department. They've done a thorough investigation. And I can speak as to her remorse. This case has gone on for months and months. Um, in all of my conversations, in person and on the phone with her, she has broken down several times in tears. 
Um, she has, in my presence and in my communication, expressed, I would say, great remorse for her actions. Um, there is nothing that she can say to bring back what happened, um, but she will forever live with this the rest of her life. And at age 20, she has significant decades left to live. Um, she does have strong family support. Her mother and father are back in the courtroom today. So for those reasons I've stated, I'm asking for consideration that you adopt the agreement. Thank you. Did I spend your point in you? You did. Right. Ms. McDonald, what would you like to say? Um, I want to apologize for being cowardly and not coming forward with the information that I had. I will never understand the pain that they're going through. And I'm so sorry for what happened to Stephen. And if I could go back and try and maybe do something differently, I would. I would come forward sooner. And I'm sorry that they had false hope for all those months. I would take it back in a heartbeat if I could. That's all. So I spent a considerable amount of time considering all of this. Um, and there was very, not a whole lot of promises whatsoever made for your testimony. So it is something I just take into consideration. The crime itself is heinous beyond belief. But I think the worst part is the over a year in the head to allow this family to start their closure. The torment is beyond my comprehension. And I'm sure those scars will never go away. Not just what happened, but the 13 months after. And for those reasons, those scars won't go away. I'm not in the rank of Haida. I don't think you deserve it in any way, shape, or form. I do know that you offered up your testimony. You got some recommendations for it, but you didn't get a lot for it. So I have taken that into consideration. However, you do deserve to be locked up. Again, as I stated before, it's not just what you did, which is horrible. The fact that you had so many opportunities after to rectify it, you didn't. And at the end, it still wasn't you who came for it. And that's it's a shame. I'm sentencing you to a, a year of incarceration at the county with credit for two days. There'll be three years probation, no alcohol, there'll be testing, no drugs, there'll be testing. No contact with anyone with a felony record. No use or possession of a weapon. Report any arrest. Please contact change on the phone address within 24 hours. Follow any other written or verbal orders from your agent. Thank you. Thank you.